everyone, welcome back. My name is Diana, this is my channel Bookish Die, and today we are doing an updated State of the Library stash. So I had done one of these earlier this year where I talked about the various books that I had checked out, both uh, in physical form and ebook, and I thought, um, since I think it's been, it's been like five or six months, I believe, it's been a while, that I would update it because there has been some turnover, um, sometime, some due to things that I've read, sometimes due to uh, me running into people having holds or running out of renewals. So yeah, let's dive in. So first I'm gonna be going through my physical library books, talking about what I have checked out from my local library, and then I'll go into some eBooks. So the first book I have checked out is Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. This is a new YA fantasy. And this one, honestly, I checked out because the cover looks really interesting. It also, it also sounds interesting. So it's about two teens, one of whom works at the night zoo and the other of whom is a warrior in training and they have to work together um, to find a monster that's lurking in the jungle. So um, I'm, I haven't been reading a whole lot of why I, I feel like I haven't been reading a whole lot of why fantasy this year, but like I said, this cover looked really interesting. I've heard some, uh, authors that I follow talk this up. So I'm very interested to see if it, this is something that I enjoy. The next YA book I have is Blood Like Magic by Lisal uh, Sambury. This is a contemporary YA fantasy and it centers on a young witch who uh, in order, to, uh, Boya Thomas, in order to uh, complete her calling, which she has to do to get her powers, uh, she has to uh, kill her first love and it goes from there. And so again, this is something that I've heard about. It is Canadian YA fantasy, which um, I would like to read more of. Um, so, and the cover again looks really pretty. And then the sequel, that cover has been announced. What are you doing, kitty? Um, so yeah, this again looks really interesting. Uh, sounds like something I could like. And yeah, I'm hope maybe gonna get to it in December. I don't know. And then the last YA book I have checked out from my library is another Canadian YA. This is a Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. And so it's in a world, it's again, contemporary YA fantasy, and it's in a world where the fae folk uh, are living amongst humans and uh, they, they're concealed by magic and like four teens have to uh, deal with some murders that might expose fairy. And so this sound, sounded kind of similar to the October Day series in that setup. And the October Day series is one that I love. And this one uh, being contemporary YA fantasy, contemporary YA fantasy with queer teens at the center of it sounded really interesting. Plus uh, the cover also looked cool. So again, something that I'm hoping to get to sounds really interesting. The sequel cover has been announced. I will say the sequel cover does not look that good. It looks like the publisher did not try at all. So not great. But anyway, this one at least I like the cover of. Then I have a couple of graphic novels checked out. The first is the first volume of Once in Future, written by Karen Gillan, illustrated by Dan Mora and uh, Tamara Bonvillain. So this was actually nominated for the Hugo. I didn't get around to reading it for the Hugos, but I have kind of mixed feelings about Karen Gillan right now because I adore Young Avenger, that his run of Young Avengers, that was great but I deeply dis I did not like the first volume of Die and so I'm a little worried that this is going to be more along the lines of Die than Young Avengers and so this is a King Arthur comes back type of story. And the other one I have checked out is again something I meant to read for the Hugos, did not read for the Hugos because when I'm recording this voting has closed, uh, is the second volume of Invisible Kingdom written by J. Willow Wilson, illustrated by Christian Ward. And I loved the first volume and I just, I haven't read the second one yet, but I'm looking forward to it because like I said, I love the first volume, I love the art, I love the story that this graphic novel is telling and I'm really interested to see where it goes next. 
been some physical adult fiction books from my library. The first is a Beverly Jenkins. This is Forbidden. It is the first book in her Old West series, I think it is called. Um, so I read actually the third book first uh, and very much liked it. That was Tempest. Uh, and so I went back and checked this one out. So this is about a young woman who's trying to get to California and she gets robbed and left in the desert and she's rescued uh, by Reen Fontaine who is passing as white in Nevada. And they catch feelings for each other and he needs to decide, does he want to stop passing as white and live as a black man in order to be with her? I haven't, I, I read the first few pages, but I, for some reason I just wasn't in the mood for a romance so I didn't get much further but like I said I really enjoyed the other Beverly Jenkins book that I read this year so I do have high hopes for this. Next is Penrick and the Shaman by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is the second book novella in the Penrick and Desdemona series which I read the first one uh, over the summer and I enjoyed. I like Bujold's writing and I'm really happy that my library actually has physical copies of these books because these are the very nice expensive versions that Subterranean Press had published and I think this one is actually out of print in physical copy. So again, something I'm hoping to get to soon. Next is yet another book I meant to re read, uh, not for the Hugos but for the Lodestar even though I did plan on ranking it below No Award because it shouldn't have been nominated for the Lodestar because it is an adult book and that is A Deadly Education. I can't remember if this was included in my State of the Library, my previous State of the Library stash, but this is a contemporary fantasy by Naomi Novik set in a magic school and it follows a girl named Elle who has dark magic and she is trying to survive the school. And I had tried to read this last year and I kind of bounced off the opening chapters, but I have friends who really like this and I did really enjoy Uprooted and Spinning Silver. So I don't know if it's just the style that Novik is taking with this compared to the other ones, but I don't know, I'm gonna try and read it. But if I don't read it, I won't be too torn up, too torn up about it. And the last adult fiction book is Transcendent Kingdom by Yag Yassi. So this is a um, more just general lit fic and it's centered on a young wo uh, woman who's a researcher at Stanford who's a PhD candidate in neuroscience and she is um, dealing with the her brother who's addicted, her um, mother who is suicidal and yeah so I have actually re I read um, her previous novel Homegoing and I really really liked it so while litfic normally isn't my thing I do plan on reading this um, because I do really like her writing. And then the last batch of physical books that I have are all nonfiction. so the first one is Cast The Origins of Our Discontent by Isabel Wilk are discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. This is a book on the history of race in America and her argument is that it is race uh, serves as a caste system. So this was uh, the book Communi Communa Read book for a couple months ago and that's hosted by Jess Owens and I had meant to read it then didn't get around to reading it but I do want to read this. I've heard good things about it um, as well as Wilkerson's other book The Warmth of Other Suns. Um, so that's something hoping to get to soon. I also have Agent Sonia, Moscow's Most Daring Wartime Spy by Ben McIntyre. So Ben McIntyre specializes in spy nonfiction. So I've read several of his other books dealing with World War II spies, including um, Operation Mincemeat, um, which is about them planting ate fake papers on a dead body and dropping off the coast of Spain to trick the Nazis. Um, I've read some of his books on Cold War spying. So I like reading books about spies and this kind of fits the bill. And this is about a Russian spy who lived in England and I don't think she ever got caught. Um, yeah, I don't think she got caught. So looking forward to that. Keeping on the spy, we have Spooked Donald Trump's 
The Trump Dossier, Black Cube, and the Rise of Private Spies by Barry Meyer. This one I just picked up because it was on the new bookshelf at my library. And Barry Meyer is a former New York Times reporter who wrote um, one of the earliest looks at the opi opioid epidemic in the United States. And so he's cited by Patrick Brennan Keefe in Empire of Pain as one of like the people who started the process of looking at uh, opioids being dumped or being massively distributed uh, in the US. So I think this should be very interesting to read. And then the last one is a book that I've actually been meaning to read since undergrad, so like a long time. And that is A Lexicon of Terror, Argentina and the Legacies of Torture by... You gotta know this. Uh, Marguerite Feetlowitz. So uh, one of my areas of study in, in college was Latin America and the histories of torture and repression, state-sponsored torture and repression there. And so this is about um, Argentina dealing with the aftermath of their last military junta from the late 70s to early 80s and attempts to seek justice. So this version is actually um, was published in the late 90s and there is an updated version that came out about 10 years ago I believe that deals with some of the trials that went into place because one of the things in Argentina and the reason why there had to be there was such a lengthy gap between when the last dictatorship happened and then the trials was that they passed a law basically granting blanket amnesty and it was like a uh, law of forgetting similar to what Spain had and there was just no prosecution it was done in order to maintain stability and so I actually have read the updated epilogue I haven't read the, the main book but I've read the updated part that goes into the trial and kind of this long march towards attempting to get the victims attempting to get justice and vic the desaparecidos their families attempting to get justice so um super cheery reading I know but this is something that I've been interested in a while and I and it I saw that my library had it so I figured why not and now to get in to the ebooks that I have checked out some of these uh, might be repeats. I can't remember which ones. Um, so we'll see. So first, I think I'm going to go with two that I think are repeats. Uh, so the first is Chaos on Catnip by Catnip by Naomi Kritzer. This is a YA science fiction. Uh, it is the sequel to Chaos on Catnip, which I read last year, I believe, and I really liked. It's about um, an AI who really likes cats and creates a social network a social media network that's devoted to people sharing photos of cats or other furry animals and a young woman who uses that and who uses that social network and then her dealing with her abusive father tracking her and her mom down and so this is the sequel to that and then the other one which i think actually the other one which i'm pretty sure is a repeat is the vanished birds by Simon Jimenez. So this was, Simon Jimenez was up for the Astounding Award for Best New Author at the Hugos. I meant to read it, I did not read it. Um, so this is a science fiction novel where with a woman finding a young boy and adventures that they go on. Um, yeah, it is a mysterious child that lands in the care of a solitary woman changing their lives forever. Um, so that's two of the books. And then other ones that I have checked out, a couple of nonfiction ones. So the first is The Devil's Chessboard, Alan Dulles, The CIA, and The Rise of America's Secret Government by David Talbot. So this is all about uh, Alan Dulles, who is the founder of the CIA. And this, I think this has been on my radar for a while, but I bumped it up what I wanted to read because I was listening to the podcast Behind the Bastards and they did a three-part series on Alan Dulles and his brother John Foster Dulles who uh was the Secretary of State at the same uh during Eisenhower during the first part of Eisenhower's presidency and so the, <clears throat> that series was talking about how they kind of jointly fucked up the world and this sound again 
interest in spies, but also more of like the geopolitics, learning about different ways uh, America's colonialist tendencies have impacted others. And then the other one I have is Tastemakers, Seven Immigrant Women Who Revolutionized Food in America by Mayuk Sen. So this is a food nonfiction book where it's looking at seven different immigrant women as well as an interlude focusing on Julia Child uh, and how those seven women impact or influenced America's taste. So you have um, uh, figures like Elena Se Zelayeta, who is a Mexican woman who helped introduce Mexican food. You have Marcela Hazan, uh, Norma Shirley, who who was from Jamaica and who um, led to the, who helped champion Jamaican food. And so this just sounded really interesting in terms of a food, a nonfiction book about food that isn't focused on white men or solely on European cuisine. And so this I forget where I heard about this. I think it was in like upcoming nonfiction books list or something, but it sounded very interesting. I'm really looking forward to reading it. Let's see, what else do I have? Um, I have His Secret Illuminations by Scarlett Gale. This is a fantasy romance and it centers a uh, sheltered monk who goes on a quest with a warrior woman and I have heard about this from a couple of different people and it just sounds very, very good and delightful and I'm always up for new romances. Uh, <clears throat> along those lines, I also have Donut Fall in Love by Jackie Lau. This is her new contemporary romance. I have read a couple of Jackie Lau's self-published romances. I enjoyed them. And so I'm very interested to see what her trad pub romance is like. And I'm hoping it works better for me than the other food romance I read this year, which was A Sweet Mess which was not good. Do not recommend it. Um, like the more I think about a sweet mess, the more it goes down in my estimation. And Rachel like Kalanati read the sequel this year. And I'm like, glad I decided not to touch that because it sounds again, like a mess. Anyway, very much like Jackie Lau. Very excited to read that. And then I have a paranormal romance for Tao, which is new because I don't normally read paranormal romances, but it's called Her Wolf in the Wild by Rian Gray. And this is an FF uh, wolf shifter romance. And it sounds very interesting. It was talked about in the discord that I'm in. And again, I'm not normally into paranormal romances, but the fact that it was a female female romance made me very intrigued. And the people in the discord were like, this is pretty good. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And then the last one I have checked out is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. So this is a retelling of the Arthurian Lady of Shalott, I believe. And I've heard mixed things. I've, I've heard some people like it. Some people are like, this is very much like a vibe, like no thoughts, just vibes book. Um, so I'm interested to see how I feel about it. So that is my current state of library stash. A lot of books. Um, We'll see how many I get through by the end of the year because I have been in a bit of a reading slump, but there's a lot here. There should be something that I feel like reading soon. Uh, and yeah, I think this is probably gonna be a semi-regular thing just because I do like talking about the books that I check out from my library and also promoting uh, potentially books that people not, might not know about because um, I know with my library in particular, like it does have a lot of new books, but in, for like nonfiction stuff, it does have a pretty great uh, backlist. So yeah, uh, do any of these books sound interesting? Have you read any of these books and have thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.